A data scientist with a certain set of skills is a unicorn. Employers will never want to let them go. They have much more chances of landing a great job, get promoted faster than their peers, and in general, their career perspective is as bright as the sun. These skills are important for a staff data scientist, a freelancer, or a startup creator. Even more important for the latter. You'll see why. Let's take a step back. Normally managers, sales, entertainers and alike demonstrate highly developed soft skills. Contrary to that, engineers are usually very technical. And this goes without saying, you need certain fundamentals for a given profession. But what if you are a data scientist and you want to stand out from the crowd? What do you need to demonstrate? Soft skills and not just an ability to casually tell a joke. Although if you can do it within a hardcore technical context, that is great, but some specific actions will instantly set you apart from your colleagues. Soft skills for an engineer? This may sound controversial, but check this out. A data scientist on its own is a rare competence. It is in demand. A data scientist with highly developed soft skills is an unusual combination, much more rare and much higher valued. Let me explain with a few practical examples why this is important, and at the end I will list the most valuable skills and how to acquire them. Short disclaimer. Of course, you cannot execute a data science function without the necessary topic knowledge. And if you want to learn about the fastest path to a data science career, then check out this video right here. But if you are already there and are wondering where is that promotion you've been waiting for, then keep watching. Imagine this. A data scientist in an AI consulting firm is working on some project for a customer. They do a great job with data pre-processing, feature engineering and build the most accurate model. Now it's time to present the results to the customer. So the client sets up a meeting with a bunch of C-level executives to absorb the wisdom gained from their data. And our data scientist starts to explain to them skewed data distributions, three sigma outliers treatment, weight of evidence encoding, reasoning behind parameter selection in a grid, and other good stuff. This is not what they want to hear. This is not what is supposed to be discussed at such meetings. And I've seen this so many times like you wouldn't believe. They might have done a great job, technically, but could not make an extra required step to concisely summarize the results and highlight the business value. You can be sure the employer will not let this guy speak the next time around. Here is another example. There are five data scientists on a team. Some are stronger, some are weaker, but all of them are well equipped for the job. The team is getting bigger. Who will become the tech lead? The one who can communicate effectively. The higher the level of communication, the more likely that on that level there will be less tech and more business talk. This means that from our data science team, playing on that level will be not the one with the strongest hard skills, but the one who can concisely explain to a non-technical audience complex technical ideas, results of advanced analytics projects, and how they impact business. There was this one interview for a data scientist opening on our team that I can't forget. Our HR found a great candidate. We've checked out his GitHub repo and were amazed by the depth of projects and the clarity of his code. The only grain of salt was a 14-page resume that this guy composed about his achievements. And this is a red flag, by the way. I have a video about how to make a killer resume in production. It should appear here shortly. Anyway, we were all very excited to speak to this guy. But at the interview, this guy basically defined everyone around him as stupid bots who understand nothing and deserve no right to breathe. His self-confidence somehow transformed into pure arrogance. As good as he was, technically, we would never hire someone like him. I really don't understand how he got employed in the first place. Maybe a personal startup is a way to go for such superstars. I have one last example for you. I started my data science career in 2015. I was fortunate to have a background that provided the necessary soft skills. Throughout the past 8 years, a lot has changed in my career. I keep in touch with the folks I had started with and unfortunately I can see that those who stay purely technical didn't progress much. 8 years had passed and they are in the same place doing the same thing. What I'm saying is that even if you are a rockstar data scientist but you don't possess or develop the necessary skill set, sometime later you might find yourself as a die-hard 50-year-old coder. This is not a bad thing. I would actually be sincerely happy for those professionals who seem to have found the single best job in their life and uh, 100% satisfied with what they do. I love coding and I get the comfort of developing a scalable and optimized program that never crashes. But if you want to develop your career beyond that, then start talking. So what exactly are these soft skills that I'm referring to and how to acquire them? There are five and along with my personal advice, which may be considered subjective, in the description you'll find some great courses on how to develop each of these competences. Number one is concise communication and you have this covered if you can explain 
explain the most complicating concept you've been working on to your office manager in five minutes. You can develop this by teaching something to someone, help your colleague understand backpropagation, or start a medium blog where you can write about the unusual technical challenges that you have successfully solved. Not only you will understand the topic better, but you will learn how to deliver the information so that other people understand it. Number two, diplomacy. Even though you're smart, be humble and always find the right words in order not to offend your opponent. This is a tricky one. Diplomacy is a craft that takes time to develop. And from my point of view, it's really a superpower that helps you achieve many goals, not only at work, but in life. A long time ago, I've been preparing myself for a career in management consulting. Since then, for years now, I've been signed up to this one former McKinsey employee's weekly newsletter. It's nothing about tech, but instead he elaborates about effective business communications, decision making and general corporate wisdom. It's a short newsletter, I read it every week and every time I find something very useful to improve in my day-to-day -day activities. And it's free. Number three is learning to listen. Not only this is just polite to let the other person finish what they have to say, but also after they have finished, you can tailor your response to the context. Just follow a simple rule, be the last one to speak. Don't rush to comment and interrupt. Hear everybody out and draw a line under the discussion with an effective conclusion. Number four, be objective. If you're wrong, admit it. If you're mitigating a conflict, get to the bottom of the both parties' reasoning. The solution might be obvious and it could have just been miscommunication. The rule of thumb here is simple. Emotions bring zero value while analysis solves the problem. You're a data scientist. Apply a data-driven approach to solve an argument. The last one but very important is be organized. Plan and communicate your actions. Keep it clear for yourself and the team. This way your work can be predictable and transparent and this will be highly appreciated by everyone who works with you or who depends on your output. Here are some fundamental tips on being organized. Every evening plan your next day and stick to that plan no matter what. Deliver what you have promised on time or provide a reasonable explanation why you're about to miss a deadline. Keep your code, documents and basically everything around you well structured and standardized, always in the same place. And remember, clean desk is a clear mind. And this is deeper than it sounds. So demonstrating these skills, a staff data scientist will most likely be assigned the most important projects, be a part of important meetings, be granted team leadership, be a part of any decision-making process. And for a freelancer who has to wear many hats at once, these skills are absolutely crucial. There will be no one around them to smooth the corners. This will all be their responsibility. A success in freelance data science will depend on their soft skills just as much as the tech stack. This set of skills will help progress a career in any domain. But it is especially valuable for highly technical people like data scientists just because it is often overlooked as not the first priority. For an employer, a good engineer who is well organized and can speak human language is invaluable. Try exercising the above and you will instantly notice how your work, tasks and feedback will level up. You are already a good data scientist. Take an extra step, become exceptional.